All right, what's up guys? Today I'm back with another little video. Today I'm gonna be uh, taking off everything from on top and on the bottom of the transmission, such as uh, the intake and uh, clutch line, cooling, um, and everything just basically on the top, just to clear it out. Distributor too, I kind of like taking off the distributor. Uh, just gives me more uh, access to around the bell housing and the bolts in the back and stuff. Uh, I'm going to be taking off both axles and uh, the what is it, intermediate shaft or half shaft or whatever. And yeah, so before I actually jack it up, I'm going to uh, take off the axle nuts on both sides. And uh, I'll be ready to uh, raise the car up and take the axles out and such and stuff like that. But yeah, so um, I kind of want to do this like in one or two days if possible, maybe three. Um, I want to get it done ASAP, but I'm not really in a big rush. I just don't like downtime. But yeah, so let's get started. I'm going to start off with uh, taking all this stuff off up here to uh, gain access to the transmission. All right, guys, so this is basic stuff that I have. My floor jack, jack stands, rags, gloves, all my tools. And uh, this is basically uh, just to put parts in sandwich bags for uh, little miscellaneous clips, bolts, and whatnot. And inside there, I have uh, other stuff to store parts. And don't forget water. But yeah, so this is basically all I have for the job. And this is basically all you need. And uh, make sure you have this. It's the 32 millimeter um, socket for your axles. So just make sure you have all the little miscellaneous uh, important stuff. And yeah, so now I'm going to work over here and finally get to work. Basically wanted to lay everything out so it's uh, nice and organized. Disconnect your battery because uh, all of this wiring harness is going to have to like move out the way. And uh, you don't want anything grounding out, shorting or whatever. But it does kind of suck because when you disconnect your battery, you know that your car is going to be dead for a little while. But yeah, so this is actually not even bolted in, but yeah, so I got to take off this bar and take out the intake and uh, stuff like that. All right, guys, so I usually don't wear gloves because, uh, uh, you know, it's usually a long, I mean, a short process of whatever I'm doing. But um, usually if you get into something this involved, to have uh, grease on your hands for an, for an extended period of time, it kind of sucks. Alright guys, so I basically have everything removed and the transmission is pretty bare. I got the slave right here, kind of like looped around here and resting up there. And uh, yeah, I got everything and I got uh, the rear um, speed sensor and this is the harness that goes right there. And uh, now I'm going to go crack the axle nuts and take off the half shaft and axles.
Damn, that shit's rusty. Alright guys, so I got the other axle nut off with the uh on the passenger side. I got it off with this. Basically that goes in there and this is the jack stand handle. And I basically put it in like this. And this is actually a really really good idea. I've been cracking these uh nuts off for for years using this wrench. I mean this uh this ratchet. And uh, I hammer on it, I beat on it, I step on it to crack off bolts and it doesn't give up. Uh, just a little cleaning maintenance every other year and it works good. And uh, this is called the Pear Head um, Stanley Ratchet. It's their cheapest one. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Yeah, I don't think so. But yeah, but it's uh, 89 dash. 819 CRV and remember I told you that they kind of incorporate the same because it's actually the same pattern over for the breaker bar the reason why I use this is because I've been having luck and I don't want to break my new breaker bar because uh, I don't want to stress it out when I use this with my hand alone and if I snap this I don't really care for it it was uh, $11.99 but yeah but Stanley Pick one up, pretty good. And they have a, a 3 8 and they have a quarter inch, the same style. All right guys, I just took a quick break. Got the wheels off. Got it on jack stands. Got the axle nuts uh, broken off. When I go under there to take off the rest of the bolts on the bottom, I'm gonna keep the jack securing the car along with the jack stands obviously but um, yeah whenever I'm under the car I use uh, the jack stand to support the vehicle also just for uh, added insurance because you never know um, and then that's also what I'm going to use to lower the transmission with but I'm not going to be under the vehicle at that time so it's all good so now I got to uh, pull the axles off on both sides and uh, get the half shaft not really gonna pick it up that good under here but yeah I'll get some uh, light when I'm under there I'm just gonna uh, pull these uh, spindles off and uh, take it out and then pull them off from the half shaft side and then go to the next side all right so I'm taking off the bottom ball joint right there and uh, this boot and everything seems uh, very good the clips holding up and all that um, I just got the car aligned but all I'm doing is gonna take off the, uh, the bottom ball joint and it's just gonna slide right up and I'm just gonna move it to the side take out the axle out of the hub but um, if this is a McPherson style um, suspension assembly you're gonna have two bolts that go through the shock and your spindle is gonna be right here and those a lot of the times those bolts are uh, cam style bolts you could adjust the camber and on uh, some cars caster and all that stuff well you can not adjust caster you cannot adjust uh, camber so um, it's only one setting preset the only thing you could change is your toe and since I'm not gonna be touching the steering nothing's gonna get out of alignment because all I'm doing is taking out this out of the lower control arm so yeah so uh, I'm not going to lose my alignment or anything because I'm not touching the steering, but if you are uh, running a McPherson style like an RSX or a newer type of Honda or uh, or Acura, I'm pretty sure uh, like the Accords, like the early to mid 2000 Accords still run this type, but Civics uh, switched to uh, McPherson. But yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there. Alright guys, I don't know about you, but usually I have a lot of bad luck taking this uh, axle out of the transmission and usually what uh, people do they just uh, keep prying and prying and prying at it but uh, I've actually had very bad luck doing all that so basically 
you need a thick bar like this. This is at least probably a, an inch thick or maybe three quarter. Feels nice and tempered, feels good. Put it in there, in between the axle. Let me try and get some light. So yeah, so you get it, you put it in between like that and you kick the living hell out of it and uh, just bust it loose. Don't uh, treat it with respect, just uh, kick it, karate kick and it'll come right out. All right, so there it is right there. Find in between. Let me get the bar back. Right there. It's out. Let it drain out, and uh, yeah, you're you'll be good to go. But uh, don't treat it like a baby. Treat it like you're gonna kick the living shit out of a penguin, and uh, everything's all good. And uh, that's just what I've learned. Because if you uh, treat it with respect, it's gonna walk all over you. Let everything drain out. When I pull the axle out, this came gushing out. Um, I'm gonna end up uh, taking it off from right there also. It's basically a 3 8 drive. And uh, yeah, you could just kick that also. But yeah. All right guys, so this is a little tip. If you're having trouble taking off the lower ball joint, get a floor jack, put it underneath the stud with the castle nut inverted upside down jack up the jack compress the suspension and hit it right right there one tap and she's done under load but you need at least 50 60 70 maybe 900 pounds of uh preload on the stud and it'll snap right off in one small little hit just to shock it all right guys i got the uh passenger axle out next i'm gonna get the uh this half shaft out it's basically a female axle that goes right into here there's a bolt for it and there's another one right beside it and uh once you take this half shaft out just slide it out this way and it's going to disconnect from the trans and you're going to have a couple brackets, this bracket right here, that bracket, this is basically like a heat shield, I guess, for uh, these rubber components because the exhaust is right there. And there's another bracket right here, and this is your, uh, your shield right here for uh, your flywheel. And if you have a lot of leaks like I do, coming from up above all oil, uh, it's good to have this shield to protect uh, your clutch from contamination and debris from uh, the highway and stuff like that. It's actually on the on there too. Um, if you're rocking a Type R, you don't have any of this stuff. You have a big, beefy looking uh, aluminum piece right here that's basically lightweight and it's a strong brace. And JDM Type R's also rock uh i think it's the ctrs the civic type r's or the itrs that rock uh the ac compressor bracket and that's also a uh, billet aluminum but yeah so since this is just a uh, usdm um plain jane gsr uh it's got all these uh steel pieces except for that piece that's uh, aluminum 
But yeah, so I'm gonna take these off and uh, the half shaft right here. Taking off the half shaft and uh, I have plenty of leverage, but it's really not that much place space for me. Yeah, this breaker bar works perfect. No flex, nothing. Take off this other one. There, it's off. But yeah, so first genuine use of this breaker bar, it's pretty good. All right, let me take this thing off now. All right, so. All right, so now that I have a uh, the three bolts, I was actually mistaking, it's three. And this is the ones, they have that little sleeve right there. They're all the same, so you don't gotta uh, remember which uh, position they go. And this shaft basically slides right out. Kind of a pain, but yeah. So once that out, once that's out, set it down. And uh, since you already drained uh, your fluid, everything is all good. So now get the rest of your brackets. And uh, yeah, proceed on uh, just breaking it down. All right, so I got uh, both the brackets out. This one and the one up here. I got the shield out. I got the half shaft out. Next up those two T-bracket bolts stabilizer bar shifting bar uh, 12 millimeter bolt and uh, this pin the roll pin and uh, yeah next up is uh, just bell housing bolts above and on the side and it's ready to drop Oh, yeah, and the, uh, the trans mountain, but that's obvious. All right, so for the roll pin, basically get yourself a punch. Put it right up there and start hammering away and smack it. I have really no way to mount to uh, hold the camera and do it underneath the car. So you guys are just going to have to uh, watch a video on how to do this on YouTube. But yeah, it's basically just get a punch and just smack it. It's pretty easy. Um, if you have salty roads, steel on steel, it's going to bind up. It's going to corrode. A lot of people will just have to uh, drill them out and buy another one for five bucks, which isn't really bad. But yeah, just uh, buy it ahead of time, obviously. So let me get this out. All right, guys. So I try to uh, take the uh, the bitch pin out, and that's just uh, exactly what it is. It's not budging. But I thought I'm running a, a short shifter, and uh, the bolts are kind of loose, and I'm running a gang of washers, as you can see right there, by the wrench or uh, the pliers, and. Uh, it got loose by like the vibration so I just thought about taking it off right there and tightening it when I uh, redo it so instead of taking it off here I'm just gonna drop the whole linkage right there and there's uh, this piece right there dropped I got the two pressure plate bolts out and now I'm ready to start taking off bell housing bolts which is uh, kinda crazy alright so uh, let me get busy and uh, hopefully drop this thing soon all right guys so she's just about to be dropped right now I got all this work done everything looked like it just exploded got everything from underneath taken care of um, and I feel pretty good got a lot of energy my back is good and uh, yeah, but I'm gonna take a break to save uh, to save myself. And uh, yeah, never want to push yourself too hard. Always take breaks. And uh, yeah, because remember, it's your body that's doing all the work. Your mind just tells you to do it. 
So you gotta know when to take breaks. You gotta clean up these little brackets and stuff, even though they're gonna get leaked on again. I can't put them back on all messed up. But yeah. So uh, next clip should be um, putting the jack underneath the engine, raising it up a little bit off the engine, take off the load off the mount, take the mount off and work on the upper um, bell housing bolts and everything's good. All right guys, so I got the through bolt out and these two studs and well no a bolt here and two nuts right here I got the through bolt so now that's loose all I have to do is lower the engine and take out this mount and take out um, this uh, this bolt right here on the bell housing and this thing is ready to come out Now that's freaking scary. So, it looks like I need a mount. Now it's pretty toasted. Alright guys, trans is down, there's my clutch, and I'm ready to throw that straight in the garbage and put in some uh, legit stuff. Oh yeah, uh, I didn't have uh, anything to hold the, the engine with besides the floor jack, and the engine weighs a uh, shit ton. So I, I decided to use the floor jack for the engine and just use uh, my strength for the transmission. 
I dropped it about three inches off the ground it should be good but yeah so now I got to take off uh, the pressure plate and the flywheel all right guys so this is the clutch and check that out that's crazy there's no more no more ridges or nothing like these going by so this is what uh, 21 thousand miles well actually over that over 20,000 miles of uh, daily city driving in traffic in Los Angeles downtown all over LA and uh, obviously pools highway pools um, and a lot of stuff yeah so pressure plate actually has a groove right here and a groove right here all the way around so everything was just like sinking in it went down to the rivets right there that one right there was touching and yeah all right guys so I got my first flywheel bolt it's a 12.17 12.17 uh, socket on the breaker and I have nothing locking the flywheel on this side because I have a 6.17 with the good old Stanley ratchet right there and it basically rests against uh, this mount right here so when you go to spin those off this locks the crank and you are good to go and you already know crank pulleys uh, those things are on there sometimes for life but that easily gets it out so a little another little tip without having to buy the locker that goes uh, right here in between the teeth and stuff or shoving a wrench in there but yeah or you can just shove a screwdriver through the pressure plate bolt hole and uh, you could lock it that way so you can take off the pressure plate I mean the flywheel bolts almost got them a few more to go all right guys so this is day one and I have to uh, quit right there because as you can see the rear main seal is leaking yeah so uh, I can't hang the transmission I can't put uh, flywheel, pressure plate, clutch, anything on until I uh, hit up a parts store for that dang seal. But yeah, so uh, this is going to conclude uh, this right here and uh, it's already getting kind of long so 